In this video, we're going to talk about the zeros of a function. Now, a number c is said to be a zero of a function f if f of c is equal to zero. Okay, so c is said to be a zero of a function if when you input the c into the function, the output is zero. Okay, so it's not what you get when you plug in zero into your function. It's what is it's a number that you can plug into your function where you get an output of zero. So there's a close relationship uh, between the zeros of a function and the x-intercepts of a function. And in fact, uh, c will be a zero of f if and only if c comma zero is an x-intercept of the graph of f. And notice that the fact that when you plug in c you get out zero, that means that the ordered pair c comma zero is on the graph, but c comma zero of course will lie along the x-axis, right? So for every uh, zero of a function you're going to have an x-intercept, and for every x-intercept you're going to have a zero. Okay, so there's, there's this relationship. Okay, let's do an example. Uh, first of all, show that the number five is a zero of the function f of x equals equals x squared minus 7x plus 10. And the question is, are there any other zeros? Well, to show that 5 is a 0, we would just need to show that f of 5 is 0. But notice f of 5 is 5 squared minus 7 times 5 plus 10. And that's just 25 minus 35 plus 10. But that's 0, right? 25 minus 35 is negative 10 plus 10 is 0. So notice 5 really is a 0 of the function because when we plugged in 5, we got an output of 0. Now notice what I'm going to graph here is the function x squared minus 7x plus 10. And I've graphed this right here. It turns out it's a parabola. This is the graph of x squared minus 7x plus 10. And notice it has an x-intercept at 5 comma 0. Right? 5 was a 0 of the function, so 5 comma 0 is an x-intercept. So you can see what I've graphed here is y equals x squared minus 7x plus 10. Okay, or f of x equals x squared minus 7x plus 10. Okay, well notice uh, it also looks like there's another 0. And if I'm reading this graph right, it looks like it's also at the number 2. Okay, so our first guess might be is that 2 is another 0 of this function. So the 0 of a function doesn't have to be unique. You can have multiple zeros of a function. Okay, well, so our guess is that it's 2, but how could we know that with just looking at this equation rather than looking at the graph? Well, it turns out what you would need to do is to factor this equation. It turns out that x squared minus 7x plus 10 can be factored and it can be factored as x minus 5 and x minus 2, right? Because x times x gives you the x squared. If you have a minus 5x and a minus 2x, that gives you the minus 7x. And minus 5 times minus 2 is plus 10. Okay, and notice, really, the question is, what numbers can you plug in here that will give you an output of 0? Notice that it's x equals 5, and the other one is x equals 2. Okay, now the minus two. Once you, you might some students think, well, why isn't why isn't it minus two? Because I have x minus two. Remember, the question is, what number can you plug in for x that will make this whole thing be zero? Okay, and the two numbers that work are five and two, and that corresponds to the x-intercepts of the graph of our function. Okay, at two zero and at five zero. Okay, so so the x-intercepts are five zero and two zero. Okay, let's do one more example, and this will be an example of a linear function. f of x equals negative 2x plus 9, and if we were to graph negative 2x plus 9, let me do it here, negative 2x plus 9, the graph looks like this. Okay, so, so what, I've, what I've drawn here, I've graphed is negative 2x plus 9. That's a linear function. Notice the y-intercept is 9 and the slope is negative 2, right? The y-intercept is 9 up here. Every time you go over 1, you're going down 2, right? The slope is negative 2. The question is, where does it cut through the x-axis? Well, notice it doesn't cut through at a nice whole number. It cuts through somewhere between 4 and 5, it looks like, right? If here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So what is it? Okay, it's not going to be a nice whole number, but how could we figure this out? Well, the way you can figure this out is to set this equal to 0, to set negative 2x plus 9 equal to 0, and try to solve for x because that's your question what value of x makes this zero well one thing that we can do is add 2x to both sides and we'll get 2x is equal to 9 and then finally we can divide both sides by 2 and then we get x equals 9 halves or if we were to write it as a decimal it would be 4.5 okay so either 4.5 or 9 halves 
uh, that is the zero of the function and notice that corresponds to this point right here so this point is 4.5 comma zero okay so you could write the uh, x-intercept as uh, 9 halves comma zero or another way of writing it would be uh, 4.5 uh, comma zero